you like waffles? Yeah, we like waffles. Get did it, it, can't wait to get a mouthful. Waffles! 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 waffles. Get did it, it, can't wait to get a mouthful. Did you know? The word waffle first appears in the English language in 1752. It is directly derived from the Dutch waffle, which itself derives from the Middle Dutch waffella. While the Middle Dutch waffella is first attested to at the end of the 13th century, it is preceded by the French waffre in 1185. Both are considered to share the same Frankish etymological root, waffle. Depending on the context of the use of waffle, it either means honeycomb or cake. Alternate spellings throughout contemporary and medieval Europe include waffre, waffer, Waffle, Waffre, Goffre, Goffrey, Goffre, Waffe, Waffle, Wafa, Waffel, Waffa, Waffle, and Vefla. Waffles have a long and rich ancestry, sprawling as far back as the early Middle Ages, somewhere in the period of the 9th to 10th centuries, with the introduction of the communion wafer iron. Though, rather than the traditional checkered patterns of waffles of today, communion irons usually depicted the image of Jesus and his crucifixion. It has been speculated that waffle irons made their first appearance in the 13th to 14th century, though it is not until the 15th century that the emergence of what can be considered a modern waffle iron had begun production. The waffle found its home in the world of art come the 16th century, when paintings by artists such as Joachim de Bechler, Peter Ertesten, and Peter Bruegel started to clearly depict the waffle in its modern form. Bruegel's work in particular not only shows waffles being cooked, but also features a man wearing three waffles strapped to his head, playing dice for waffles with a black masked carnival goer. Though odd, uh, the level of detail in the painting clearly depicts a waffle with a 12 by 7 grid, disproving all the tabloids' accusations that waffles were claiming to be in the public eye as a cry for attention. Fast forward a hundred years or so, and your average Joe everyday man could celebrate the collapse of the Ming Dynasty with any type of unsweetened slash honey sweetened variety of waffle. At this time, even the sugar trade controlling mid-century Dutch were paying half an ounce of silver for a kilo of the sweet white powder, the equivalent to approximately $32 per five pound bag of silver as prices circa August 2012. Luckily for dentists everywhere, the 18th century was a century of Caribbean plantation expansion, effectively cutting sugar prices in half. Waffles then start to become gaudy and decadent in their use of sugar and other rare sweets they would later refuse to leave the box in your freezer without. Not only did slave trading farms start to flourish in this century, but so did the English language. This is the first era where, were Merriam-Webster alive and writing, he would have made a record-breaking year in dictionary sales as this was the first time the word waffle was used in the English language. 1725's printing of Court Cookery by Robert Smith. In the most patriotic ongoing of the Waffles' entire existence, it is rumored that a young Thomas Jefferson returned to the Grand America in 1789 after a five-year trip to Europe where he spent half a decade equipped with nothing but a waffle iron and crossing the great Euroscape, spreading the great word and joy of the beloved Waffles to each and every man, woman, and child. This is said to have started the most masculinely named fad, the Waffle Frolic. Though there may be proof suggesting that waffle frolics had been documented as far back as 1744, and even though we have had nothing but the best of intentions, no nation will let America have one god damn. Luckily, by the first half of the 19th century, waffles had already taken such a hold on the world that even though the 1806 British Atlantic naval blockade skyrocketed the prices of sugar, yet again to the great dismay of the grandsons of the aforementioned dentists, so much that the waffle single-handedly sparked the idea and invention of beet sugar in less than one decade. This, however, backfired on the waffle, though very much fun-fired on the dentist I keep bringing up, as it brought sugar prices back down to such record lows that sugar products could be found in the household of more people than North America has misinformed voters. With the wide range of pastries, candies, and chocolates now available, the demand of waffles declined so much that I wish I knew how to make a gif of a line chart with an arrow that crashes off the page into the floor like you see in cartoons. Sadly, a century 2-0 came around, there were only 29 professional waffle crafters left in Paris. The recipes, few and far between in the books to be printed, seems that all hope was lost for the delicious little breakfast pastry. Until the great Maurice Vermersch graced New York World's Fair with his holy presence in 1964 with his debut, Belgium Waffles, knowing full well that not only were Americans limited in their knowledge of European geography, but that if he were to tell anyone of his true country of origin, Brussels would have been flooded with such a mass of tourists thinking it was the mecca land for one's creative endeavors because his invention was so great that all of the people of his hometown would have died of overpopulation. Thanks to his self-sacrifice and America's ability to just hear a word and believe it, 
The name eventually muddled into Belgian waffles and became our distinctly American concept of all things waffly. Thank you, Maurice Vermish. Thank you for all of your great contributions to this country, her people, and her breakfast tables. You're a goddamn hero, Mary.